Hey, welcome back to YT Finance, and this is the channel where I went to business school so you didn't need to, and today we are talking about the latest stock market news updates that investors need to know. For more videos just like this one, go ahead and annihilate that like button right now, subscribe if you are new, comment down below your thoughts about any or all of these stories, and with that being said, let's get right into today's video. The Nasdaq and the S&P 500 are up tremendously right now, mainly due to the recent gains that we've seen in Meta Platforms as well as Nvidia. Meta Platforms, formerly known as Facebook, has experienced recently an historic stock pop in their overall growth rates, which is absolutely fantastic for Meta stock investors. And we talked about that in our last video. But right now, we actually want to focus over on Nvidia, which has quietly put together a phenomenal start to 2024, to where in January, they nearly added $300 billion to their market cap, marking one of the largest monthly gains ever for this company. The excitement and momentum behind companies like Meta Platforms and NVIDIA is one of the many reasons why the S&P 500 and the NASDAQ are surging higher and even setting new records. That's why today we see a lot of green on the general stock market, and I anticipate this trend will continue throughout the year of 2024. But let's talk more about NVIDIA and why so many investors are gravitating towards this company. NVIDIA, ticker symbol NVDA, has experienced tremendous gains recently, and the gains will continue considering that a Goldman Sachs analyst reiterated his conviction and gave this company a buy rating, and he also boosted the price target of this semiconductor chip giant. The reason why the analyst increased his price target for this company is because of the robust artificial intelligence server demand and improving GPU supply from NVIDIA. The analyst raised his price target from 625 dollars up to $800 per share, which is well above the average Wall Street estimate of around $679.64, which is very close to where their current share price is trading right now. This has breathed new life into the momentum that investors are experiencing with Nvidia, and he also gave very positive future projections for this company, considering that he increased his adjusted earnings per share estimate for the company regarding 2025 and 2026, which is set to grow by an average of 22% over that time period. So this is very positive news for this company. Some investors are so bullish on Nvidia that they believe that some of this success will rub off on AMD, to where they believe AMD, which is an Nvidia competitor, will be worth more than Tesla by 2025. So let's get right into the story. The author starts off by reminding us about what happened to General Electric, which was the fifth largest American company with a market cap of around $243 billion. However, as time went on, they fell down to the 11th largest U.S. company, and then at the time of writing, they're currently around the 52nd largest U.S. company. The author is trying to communicate that companies which are dominant currently may fall off over the future, and they believe that this could happen to Tesla, even though I adamantly disagree with this author, and I'll tell you why in just a moment. But before I do that, we need to talk more about advanced micro devices, ticker symbol AMD, as well as Tesla, ticker symbol TSLA. We are going to compare and contrast these companies to determine which of these companies are a better investment from now until 2025. So let's get right into it. The main thing that you need to know about both of these companies is that they are both AI or artificial intelligence backed companies, even though they do radically different things. For instance, AMD designs semiconductors that serve as the quote unquote brains behind artificial intelligence. On the other hand, Tesla wants to utilize artificial intelligence to develop various products and services such as full self-driving for their electric vehicles on top of robots and robo-taxis. The funny thing about this is that Tesla actually uses devices made by AMD as well as NVIDIA to run their artificial intelligence products. However, the author of this article doesn't hark on that point, and instead, they go into detail regarding how AMD is further along in the AI adoption cycle than Tesla is. It seems that Tesla hasn't crossed the AI adoption threshold yet because it's still working on research and development of key AI software to use and utilize in their various products and services. However, I do want to chime in here because I personally hold a Tesla and AMD in my portfolio because they do different things. There's no reason why an investor can't own both of these companies in their portfolio. So I clearly think that this is a false dichotomy. You don't need to pick one of these companies over the other. I also think it's strange to compare AMD to Tesla considering that they are in 
radically different industries. Tesla is an electric vehicle company which also specializes in artificial intelligence while also having a very large segment in energy storage and energy generation. On the other hand, AMD is a semiconductor company, and it seems that Tesla has a huge upcoming catalysts which AMD will not be able to replicate. The next big catalyst for Tesla will be the completion and the rollout of their full self-driving technology and robo-taxis. Once that is complete, we also can look forward to this company coming out with a relatively cheap electric vehicle priced between 20 and 25,000 US dollars. This will cause a large increase in demand for this company, and this is going to act as a phenomenal catalyst for Tesla's TSLA share price. On the other hand, AMD is experiencing demand for their various chips right now, and that's why demand for AI chips is surging through the roof, because mega companies like Tesla, Microsoft, Alphabet, Amazon, and a plethora of others use AMD's technology to to hyperscale their own artificial intelligence. AMD has also debuted a new series of accelerators designed to challenge NVIDIA's market dominance, because remember, AMD is a direct competitor to NVIDIA. But remember, there's no reason why you wouldn't be able to hold NVIDIA, AMD, and Tesla all within the same portfolio. Now, I noticed throughout the article that the author really didn't go into the necessary growth rates of AMD in regards to how they could potentially meet or exceed the market cap of Tesla. In my opinion, AMD is not going to catch Tesla in their general market capitalization because the difference is just so large here. For instance, AMD is currently valued at around $274.83 billion, while Tesla is currently hovering at around $600 billion for their market cap. This is also coming before Tesla's major catalysts, which are coming up, but again, both of these are phenomenal companies, and I would highly encourage you to do research into both of these companies. But again, in my opinion, Tesla is going to be the leader and the forerunner in artificial intelligence and AI technology, even if it utilizes chips from AMD and NVIDIA. But in the end, AMD is not not going to catch up to Tesla in market cap according to my personal opinion, but I would love to hear your analysis and your opinion about this down in the comments below. Next up, let's talk about another phenomenal technology company that I personally own in my portfolio, and that is Apple. Apple, ticker symbol AAPL, currently trades for $186, and they recently released their Vision Pro, which is a virtual and mixed reality headset. Many analysts have been surprised about the early appeal that the Vision Pro has had on consumers, which indicates future demand for this product. Despite the hefty price tag of around $3,500, it seems that the demand for Vision Pro has been well accepted by the general market. A very prestigious analyst from Wedbush named Daniel Ives, who we consult often on this channel, recently said in a quote, while the price points are clearly high at $3,500 with a limited audience outside of developers out of the gates, we are surprised at the early mass market appeal Vision Pro is sparking with a jaw-dropping 600 apps built for Vision Pro well above expectations. He goes on to say, we believe believe Apple's Vision Pro is a potential game changer over the coming years, and Cupertino has found clear success with this next generation form factor surpassing by a wide margin original Wall Street expectations. That's why Daniel Ives has an outperform rating on Apple stock, and he has a price target of $250, which is well above their current share price of $186. According to recent data, Apple could sell as many as 600,000 Vision Pro mixed reality and virtual reality headsets just this year. This is up from their original estimate of just 460,000 units being sold this year. Daniel Lives also believes that the demand for this product will increase dramatically to where they could sell up to 1 million Vision Pros in 2025 alone. He says that this is just the start, and the Vision Pro is going to open up a market unheard of for Apple in a very long time. He also believes that they will be coming out with another version of the Vision Pro, which will act more like a pair of sunglasses, and the price point will be around $2,000. Now, this is very reminiscent of what Google tried to do back in the day with Google Glass. However, it seems that Apple has an edge up over Google in regards to popularizing a very innovative and new product. Therefore, Apple is clearly a company that you need to be watching, and I personally hold it in my portfolio, and I would love to hear your thoughts about this story down below. Next up, we have the cosmetics company, which sells makeup and other things like that, named Estee Lauder. Estee Lauder, ticker symbol EL, has increased in their overall share price by 15% today, despite relatively bad news. This is a prime example of the market being irrational. The company announced plans to cut and lay off employees by 3-5% to as a part of a profit-boosting restructuring initiative. However, there was good news here, because for fiscal quarter 2, Estee Lauder earned a 
profit of 88 cents per share on revenue of $4.28 billion. And this beat Wall Street expectations because Wall Street anticipated that their EPS or earnings per share would come in only at around 56 cents, and they said that their revenue would come in at around $4.2 billion. And clearly, Estee Lauder beat in both of these metrics, and that's why the share price is surging. However, I think this is an irrational surge, and I anticipate a larger pullback in the days following because of the announcement that they are laying off employees, and they also gave very detrimental and downbeat fiscal quarter three and 2024 revenue and earnings outlooks. So with a downbeat forecast, I don't think this momentum will be sustainable for their share price, and that's why I anticipate a pullback for this company, but I would love to hear your thoughts about this cosmetics company. We also have Boeing back in the news because they have more bad news, and man, this company has just been really going through it lately. Just bad news after bad news after bad news, but honestly, I am buying up this company because fundamentally, they are a great company, even though they have had a lot of bad news come out recently. Boeing has mainly been in the news because a piece of their aircraft blew off mid-flight during a commercial airline flight from one location to another. This caused a lot of drama, and Boeing said that they were going to fix it, and they were going to implement new policies and inspections so they can keep people safe when flying in their aircrafts. But the news just got even worse because another flaw was spotted in Boeing's aircraft. Recently, Spirit Aerosystems, ticker symbol SPR, discovered two holes in some 737 MAX fuselages, which is made in conglomeration between Boeing and Spirit Aerosystems. Therefore, the aircraft maker will need to perform more work on various airplanes at airlines, which will delay some of their near-term deliveries. This is going to hurt Boeing as a company, and it's also going to hurt the airlines which use aircrafts that they got from Boeing. This is why we've seen the share price of Spirit Aerosystems and Boeing both fall recently. However, the CEO did come out with multiple statements, and he says, and I quote, While this potential condition is not an immediate flight safety issue, and all 737s can continue operating safely, we currently believe we will have to perform rework on about 50 undelivered airplanes. He goes on to say, we instructed a major supplier to hold the shipments until all the jobs have been completed to specification. He even went on to say, we will take advantage of the days in the factory, Renton's 737 plant, so that our team can catch up on unfinished jobs across all 737 factory positions, end quote. So again, it seems that the bad news keeps piling on for Boeing as well as Spirit Aerosystems. But honestly, Boeing is still a fundamentally solid company, and I'm just going to wait for the company to drop even further further in their share price, and then I'm going to make another investment into this company, because eventually they will rebound in their share price, according to my thesis. But always make sure to do your own research before you make any investment decision. Next up, let's talk about Novo Nordisk, which is a phenomenal company that I also personally hold in my portfolio, because Novo Nordisk recently bought three plants for $11 billion to boost their Wagovi output. So let's get right into the story. Novo Nordisk recently agreed to buy three manufacturing plants for $11 billion to help meet the surging demand for their obesity drug named Wagovi, and they also did this because of the increase in the demand for their diabetes shot named Ozempic. As of right now, this is great news, and Novo Nordisk dominates this respected market. However, their competition from Eli Lilly is becoming more fierce. Recently, the Zephound shot by Eli Lilly was recently approved, and this is predicted to become one of the best-selling products at Eli Lilly and in the general healthcare and biopharma space period. Eli Lilly's product actually works better than Wagovi in regards to weight loss, and it has outperformed anything Novo Nordisk has ever produced. This means that the competition from Eli Lilly and Novo Nordisk is heating up, and it seems that Eli Lilly is about to take the main stage and take market share away from Novo Nordisk. So feel free to look further into Novo Nordisk and Eli Lilly. I love both of these companies, but Eli Lilly, in my opinion, is the better company here. That's why I highly recommend you look into both of these companies before you decide to invest into them, but honestly, I am extremely impressed with Eli Lilly and their future product, which they are coming out with, which has already been approved. So it's only a matter of time before the company surges again in their share price. In other news, Tyson Foods beat market expectations for first quarter revenue, which is great news for this company. Tyson Foods, ticker symbol TSN, currently trades for around $60 per share, and they are up right now due to these very prominent results. Although I personally do not hold Tyson Foods in my portfolio, 
portfolio, I know a lot of other people tend to gravitate towards this company due to its blue chip stability. Tyson is a US meat packer, and they recently posted adjusted earnings of 69 cents per share, which beat analysts' expectations of 41 cents per share. So this is very good news for this company, and that's why their share price is trending upwards. The US meat packers' net sales also rose by 0.4%, up to $13.32 billion, which also beat analysts' expectations because they were anticipated to only bring in $13.27 billion. So again, more great news for this company. Tyson's chief financial officer even said that they had a phenomenal result in a quarter one, and that will influence their thinking going forward to potentially continuously bring market-beating results. But there is a catch here, because Tyson's overall adjusted operating income was actually down around 9.2% for the quarter. The main reason for this is that the company is struggling with a limited supply of cattle in the United States. In regards to their beef segment, which is one of their largest segments, they posted an adjusted operating loss of $117 million in the quarter. And this was a very large disappointment because when we compare it to their adjusted operating income of $129 million that they brought in last year, clearly it seems that things are actually headed downwards for this company. The company also had to close a lot of their chicken plants so they can consolidate their operations and they were also laying off employees to reduce costs. For all of these reasons put together, Tyson continues to expect full year sales to be relatively flat for the year of 2024, and that's why I personally am not invested into this company, because we are not anticipated to see any major fireworks for this company from now onwards. However, a company that I was very impressed with was Caterpillar, which is a construction equipment company. Caterpillar stock has absolutely skyrocketed after releasing blowout earnings, and honestly, they deserve every bit of their share price increasing, and here's why. The company reported a blowout blowout fourth quarter earnings result that moved their share price higher and their ticker symbol is CAT, ticker name CAT. The company's earnings per share, also known as EPS, came in at $5.23 per share, which beat analysts' estimates where they anticipated the company would only post an EPS of $3.86, so this was a gigantic beat. But the good news doesn't stop there. The company also brought in sales of $17.1 billion, while analysts forecasted that the company would only bring in $16.6 .6 billion. So again, this is extremely good news for the company. Looking forward, Wall Street also has a very bullish forecasts, considering that their earnings per share will come in at around $4.76 and a sales of $17.1 billion. So again, this is fantastic news. The CEO of Caterpillar even said, we remain committed to serving our customers, executing our strategy, and investing for long-term profitable growth, end quote. And that's exactly what I as an investor want to hear from such a phenomenal company. On top of that, if we look how this company has been performing over the last few months, we see that Caterpillar stock has surged by 31% just in the past three months alone. And it seems that the future of this company is extremely bright. So I'm looking forward to continuously being an investor in this company. And I would encourage you to do your own research on this company as well. Next up in our latest stock market news updates, we have McDonald's, ticker symbol MCD, which which has been performing quite well, even though their share price is decreasing right now by around 3.46%. McDonald's is a fast food chain, which owns loads of real estate, and the company recently reported their quarter four results on February 5th. They posted global same-store sales growth of 3.4%, which was lower than their expected 4.79%. But I don't think that investors should focus on the negatives here, because there are a lot of positives. In the fourth quarter, their adjusted earnings per share increased by 18%, up to $2.95, which beat analysts' expectations to where analysts forecasted that the company would only bring in around $2.82. On top of this good news, their revenue also jumped by around 8% up to $6.41 billion. So this is great news for investors. You should also know that for fiscal 2023, McDonald's reported $25.49 billion worth of total revenue, which equates to a 10% increase from what they brought in during 2022, considering that they brought in $23.18 billion. So again, this is just more good news for the company. The CEO of McDonald's even acknowledged the current consumer environment that we are facing right now where he says, and I quote, we remain confident in the resilience of our business amid macro challenges that will persist in 2024, end quote. 
Again, this is exactly what investors want to hear from the CEO of such a fundamentally strong company. They are prepared for macroeconomic challenges and volatility, yet this company will remain strong. McDonald's is not only a pretty good growth company, but they also offer investors a dividend, and that's why I personally am invested in McDonald's. We even had multiple analysts chime in after the earnings report to say that it's hard to see how McDonald's will not win throughout the year of 2024 in any consumer environment, and that came from a Wed Bush analyst. This same analyst also projects that they will sustain same-store sales growth in the near term, which will be driven by menu prices and innovation. McDonald's also utilizes loyalty programs, effective marketing, and operational execution and efficiency. So again, more great news from an analyst. We also have a Jeffries analyst who chimed in, and he said, and I quote, McDonald's is the best defensive and offensive play in restaurants, end quote. That's why this analyst named McDonald's as a top stock pick for the year of 2024 because of their resiliency. Therefore, investors clearly need to pay more attention to McDonald's and how they have brought in very fundamentally solid results in their earnings report. The future of this company, again, looks very bright, and I personally hold them in my portfolio, so feel free to do your own research to determine whether or not this company is good for your portfolio. Speaking about good news and earnings reports, we also have a lot of earnings coming in throughout this week, and here they are. On Tuesday, we have Eli Lilly set to release their earnings report alongside Ford Motor and BP. On Wednesday, we have Alibaba, CVS, Fox Corporation, McKesson, Disney, Uber Technologies, and PayPal all releasing their earnings on February 7th. The day after, on Thursday, February 8th, we have ConocoPhillips, Philip Morris, Duke Energy, Take-Two Interactive, as well as Pinterest releasing their earnings reports. And then on Friday, we have two notable companies, which would include PepsiCo and AMC Networks. If you haven't already, go ahead and annihilate that like button right now. Subscribe if you are new. Comment your thoughts down below about any or all of these stories. And with that being said, I will see you in the next YT video.